Thank you. A little change in topic. I'm going to be talking about the Bellin ABCD progression display for keratoconus. Now, if you really think about cross-linking, the goal of cross-linking should really be the prevention of sequelae, not just the preservation of lost vision. In other words, not stabilization after we've lost vision, but really to identify disease early enough that we prevent visual loss. This is really the current approach. I'm a car guy. This is called an idiot light. It tells you when things are too late. And this is really what we're doing now. This really needs to be our approach. We need to be able to monitor patients and know when there's going to be a problem, not treat a problem after it already exists. And if you look at the currently published progression parameters, and if you look down this whole list, except for, I think, pachymetry in the middle, these are all anterior curvature parameters. In other words, these are measurements to tell you when you've had progression of disease after you've already lost vision. What we really need is we need some way to monitor disease, to identify disease as early as possible, which really means we need to be able to have a system that looks at all the anatomical layers, not just the anterior surface, but also the posterior surface, corneal thickness, these parameters need to be simple so that they can be conv conveyed um, among each, each, each other. They should be platform independent as long as the system is a tomographic system, so it measures all, all these layers, and somewhat easy to convey the information. So we came out with this about two years ago. It's currently available on the Pentacam, and it's called the ABCD classification system. A stood for anterior radius of curvature. It's a measurement taken from a three millimeter zone centered on the thinnest point, not the apical reading, but centered on the thinnest point. B was for back or posterior radius of curvature, again, centered on the thinnest point on a three millimeter optical zone. C is for thinnest corneal measurement, not just an apical measurement. And D is distance visual acuity. And as I said, this is currently available. It's on the topometric keratoconus staging display. This is a blow up of the ABCD keratoconus staging. You'll see on the upper right is a graphical display of each of the four, four parameters, A anterior, B back, C corneal thickness, D distance visual acuity. The classification is on the bottom, but the actual measurement, which is really what you should be looking at, is listed over here. And again, it's in radius of curvature and on diopters because if you're looking at the posterior surface, radius of curvature is a much more intuitive measurement than diopters because the posterior cornea is a low power minus lens. And if we do some quick, this is a normal eye. You can see a four map on, on the left. You can see the topometric keratoconus staging on the right and then a blow up of the ABCD staging below. So again, a normal eye, you see everything is rated at zero. Here's an eye with advanced keratoconus. You can see again, A is over the scale. It's a markedly ectatic anterior surface, markedly ectatic posterior surface, a moderately thin cornea at C2, and moderate decrease in vision at D2. But the real goal of this was not just a classification. It was really to take this and to be able to utilize it in a progression display. Because really, we need to know when and if true progression occurs. And to do that, we needed to know the actual background measurement noise of each of these parameters. Now, we had them for some, but the A and B were new parameters. And we decided it was important to study both normals and keratoconic to determine the noise levels. The reason for that, in your very early, particularly your younger patients with very, very early disease, that measurement noise probably mimics the normal population, but in your older patient with more established keratoconic, ones that you may wait on to see if they pro progress, those measurements more closely mimic the, the keratoconic group. And what we came up with is a one-sided confidence interval, both at an 80 and 95% confidence interval, one-sided because we're only interested if the cornea thins or if it steepens. And this is what the ABCD progression display looks like. The machine automatically will display up to eight exams over time. It displays the 80 and 95% confidence interval, both for the normal and the keratic po population. The solid line here in red is the 95, in green is the 95. The hatched line is the 80% confidence interval. So here you can see when you have changes that are statistically significant. We also list a number of different parameters if you wish to, wish to look, look at those. Let's look at a couple, couple examples. This is a 33-year-old with eight years of follow-up. 
These are cases that we were able to retrospectively go back and look at. And if you look here, you can see progressive change. But notice, really, by the third exam here, we had statistically significant change, particularly on the back cornea. This is a 15-year-old with seven-year follow-up. And again, you can see statistically significant change. And noted, really, by the second exam, they had more than a 95% confidence interval, statistically significant change both on the anterior surface, the posterior surface, and by the third exam on corneal thickness. This is an interesting example. This is a 15-year-old early keratoconus, very early disease, but notice by this exam, statistically significant change on the anterior surface, but not on the posterior surface, but on the other eye, only on the posterior surface, not on the anterior surface. So again, really the importance of measuring all anatomical layers. Again, the next two would be what I think really are critical to show you the importance of looking at this, this display. This is a patient with bilateral asymptomatic progression. It's hard to see, but if you look at the visual acuities here, 2020, 2025, 2020, 2020, 2030, it actually got better, 2025, 2020, and 2020, totally asymptomatic. But look, continued progressive change, statistically significant change. This is when you should be intervening, not after they've lost vision. This is a normal eye, so so-called normal eye in a case of highly asymmetric keratoconus. The other eye was cross-linked. Both the patient and the surgeon decided to observe the second eye because the patient was totally asymptomatic. And if you look at the visual acuity, initially it was 2015. After about four years, the patient came in having lost two lines of vision, down to 2025. Both the patient and the surgeon decided, okay, you've had significant change in vision. We should cross-link this eye. But if you look retrospectively, by the second exam, they had statistically significant progression in both the anterior surface and the posterior surface. Had intervention occurred then, they would have preserved vision, not had a two-line loss of vision. Our goal should be not stabilizing after you've lost vision, but preventing loss of vision. So how do we determine progression in very early disease? We look at the ABCD progression display. I recommend any single parameter at the 95% level or any two parameters at the 80% level. Mathematically, those are basically the same. I want to thank you very much.